Hey, what's going on guys? I hope all is well. Welcome to my channel, Oscar Does It. This is the first of many videos in a series that I start to cover my lawn transformation. The videos in this episode were recorded last year as a reminder of how bad my lawn is and gauge my progress. You guys may think that my yard doesn't look bad, at least from this angle, but its true beauty or lack thereof becomes relevant when you walk the property. My lawn is full of moss, weeds, and is uneven and full of protruding tree roots. With the amount of erosion that my yard gets, the roots become more and more visible every year. So the first step to any lawn remodeling or project that you want to start it is to begin with a soil test. So I sent my soil out to be tested to Rutgers University Agricultural Experiment Station in New Jersey. I broke up my one acre property into three sections, front yard, side yard, and backyard. The results of my test have uncovered a few issues. One was the amount of negligence from the previous owners and a massive undertaking of a project that I decided to tackle. So for zone A, the front yard, the results are as follows. The soil pH is 4.64, which is way below the 6.0 to 6.60 ideal range. As for macronutrients, phosphorus is 218, which is above optimum. Potassium is 143, which is below optimum. Magnesium is 87, which is below optimum. Calcium is 884, which is below optimum. These are measured in pounds per acre. For zone B, the backyard, the soil pH is way below ideal at an astounding 3.98. It is even off the pH scale. For the macronutrients, phosphorus is, an, is optimum at 137. Potassium is at 105, which is below optimum. Magnesium is 49, which is below optimum. And calcium is 368, which is below optimum. The micronutrient numbers are zinc, which is 1.58. Copper, which is 1.52, which both are adequate. Manganese, which has 18.72, which is high. And boron, which is at 0.94, which is adequate. Iron is at 158.50, which is high. Since the soil pH is so low, and highly acidic. They recommend that I look into an acid sulfide test to determine if my soil is acid producing. If my soil is acid producing, the pH and acidity level can be corrected using limestones. I will have to add a minimum of 12 inches of topsoil with a minimum pH of 5 to minimize further acid production and allow stabilization by vegetation. This is crazy and it sounds costly. So I will have to send them an email to determine how I could conduct an acid sulfide test. The backyard's fertilizer recommendation is 212, which means that my backyard needs nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So for the final zone, which is zone C, side yard, the soil pH is 4.11, which is highly acidic. The lime requirement index is 6.80. The macronutrient numbers are phosphorus, which is 107, which is optimum, potassium, which is 140, which is below optimum, magnesium is at 58, which is below optimum, and calcium is at 492, which is below optimum. The micronutrient numbers are zinc, which is 1.31, copper, which is 1.68, which both are adequate, manganese, which is at 30.60, which is high and boron, which is at 0.95, which is adequate. Iron is at 172.90, which is high. The soil pH is below optimum for cool season turf grass. I will have to bring those numbers up to over six. So Rutgers recommends 240 pounds of dolomite limestone per 1,000 square feet. Almost the same amount as the front yard. The fertilizer recommendation is the same as the backyard, which is two, one, two. Putting all the numbers together, it looks like I will need two bags of the 212 fertilizer for the backyard and the side yard, and one bag of 101 fertilizer for the front yard. The application will be three times per year every four months. I will have to add calcium to the whole property to bring those numbers up. My main focus is to eliminate moss. Since I spent over $400 last year on products to eliminate moss or control moss growth. I tried moss out. Scott's Moss, Moss X, and both have only provided a temporary solution. For my next episode, I will be going over the four common causes of moss growth and how you can correct, correct the issue. That will be broken up into four episodes. 
Once that issue is fixed, I will be making more videos on aerating, adding lime, overseeding, and progress videos. So if you have found this video helpful, please smash the like button and subscribe. Also, leave any qu questions or comments for any videos, rec any videos recommendations that you'd like to see. Thank you for watching.